the power of silicon graphics equipment creating movie magic and tonight being used in our election graphics presentation. There's not enough lithium in the world for the world to go electric. Um, I, I just, I, I find that hard to listen to and at very least uh, distasteful, if not repugnant, in my view. I don't believe the public forum should be used for you to advertise your personal views. We are here to listen to people that present at the forum. Hard to know where to go from there. I just want to put it on If we can create right. a more prosperous city, then we'll have more of abundance around us so it will actually bring the price of things down. You know, Andy's a lot more entertaining than me, so, you know, I'm done. A real move to a better democracy or a rat bag system destined to cause political paralysis? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm Richard Pullman, New Zealand. Live here with Pamela Taylor, having a bit of a discussion earlier about some of the infrastructure spending that the council has spent. And as we know, Council of Andalus has said it's into the millions now. And Pamela had some ideas about infrastructure hey, uh, spending and changing some of the roads and putting some of the things, you know, closing them off and having some things on the roads. So. Oh, um, I feel like at the moment there are people within the current council that have an anti-car agenda and some of that is resulting in the erosion and the disappearing car parks. It's also contributing to a very high infrastructure cost and under the name of improving infrastructure, they are adding cycleways and removing car parks. So they're wanting to change George Street to a one-way system and then the two one-way systems to potentially the two-way systems. But in that process, I've heard them even discussing ideas of wanting to put trees in the middle of the road, potentially trampolines, trying to turn it into a walking area. So, um, so I, I thought... You know, um, when that started happening, I thought to myself, why not have from the octagon to the mall a walking area where you could park the buses and just have the... Because not, nobody parks, nobody goes into town and says, hey, look, I really want to go to the Scottish shop. And then panics because they can't find a park directly outside a touristy destination. and, and because there's no car parks here. And we can see in every um, major city, they do have a pedestrianised main street. We've got Cooper Street in Wellington. We've got um, that new walking, you know, like an outdoor mall. I thought that was a really good idea, personally, just for that section of the street. Because nobody goes, I, I really need to go to the Scottish shop. Oh, I can't go there now because there's no car park right outside. There's plenty of parking around the central city. And if you want to do that one, I don't agree with the business owners around there um, complaining about the parking space and acting like their books are going to go into the red because there's no, it's, that's a mockery. So how do you feel about a walking trampolines and like an outdoor space for families? Or do you really think it's going to affect the, the businesses? And that, what, what is it, 200 metres max? Well, I love the idea of a giant inflatable jumping cushion and playgrounds and trampolines um, in the park spaces and in, in the playgrounds. So I really love the idea of people going to parks and playgrounds so that they can play with their children on playground equipment. Right, I like the idea of shopping areas as being about making access so that people can go there for shopping. So as a lady, I've, I find that if there's no car parks, then it, it means you can't wear high heels or skirts or dresses. But now, the absence of car parks also means that it becomes very hard if you've got young children to be able to go around and looking at the shops. It's also incredibly hard to buy lots, lots of groceries or lots of shopping items and carry them long distances. 
It's only, this is only 200 metres, this proposed street change, so it's not very long and it's not from supermarkets and it's not, I mean, there's a bank and underground, uh, an underground, like, um, sort of novelty shop and the Scottish shop and the rest of it's a municipal chambers where the councillors are walking and everything. I think it's a good idea, personally. Again, hey, hey, hey. Hey, yeah. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! It's Pullman, after all, you know. Scratch Pullman's back, he'll scratch yours. Hey, hey, hey. Move back direction into parks, because I saw you had some good, like, you were talking about parks, like um, orchards and petting areas. The, uh, you know, we do need more family-oriented space, safe spaces where you can go with your family's hair. We, we would, if you were going to make a park, where would be your spot? Well, there's, I want to turn Dunedin into the most livable, beautiful, gorgeous, fun, family-friendly city to live in uh, around. So how much do you want to change? And so for doing this, I like to visualise all the things that would make it super amazing for taking your children around the city. So it would be really nice to have an animal petting area inside one of the parks, for example, Woodhall Gardens, that you would go there and look at baby lambs, for example. It would be wonderful if we had some bird aviaries. We have Oregano Ecos actually, which is quite good. And we have, but um, the problem with Woodhawk uh, is that it's a protective native wetland and it's one of the only um, metro gardens for, uh, but we could put somewhere like a, a pitting zoo. A pitting zoo like they used to have out in Tairima with the uh, emus and, and everything like that. Having that in town, I feel, it would be a major attraction for people who like to touch animals. Well, it would be nice if you could touch baby lambs. It would be nice if there were some chickens that you could touch. Hey, 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 hey. That would be great. Touching animals. Everybody likes touching animals and having something nice, and, and, you know? And I'm not, now, what about the luge? You, I like a luge. There's a luge in uh, Queenstown, a good luge. Um, Hey, 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 what are we? Respect for a limit. While we're waiting for Hawkins, let's, uh, hey, hey, let's see what the f is under here. See? Look at the state of that, Hawkins. We, we, I have talked to an engineering student that's like drawing up where he would think around, and we'll have that in the studio yeah. next time you come and talk to him. Well, that would be good. Uh, mm. Where would you want, like on the hills or? Well, I imagine that if you're trying to make Dunedin the most fun, livable city possible to live in, it would be really nice in the ideal oh, world man. to have Dunedin Harbour Front done absolutely beautiful into another shopping hey, and hey, recreational hey. area. And then a luge, or not luge, but a gondola system going up to the top of Signal Hill from the Dunedin Harbour side, that would just be beautiful. And then a luge. A gondola, yeah, a gondola. A luge heading down so that people can race down the hill um, with their families. And, and it would be great for all the yeah, students to be racing great. down the hill in luges. And it wouldn't cost much at all, a gondola and a luge. You know, they're already spending millions. It'd be cheap. They could do that. And there's also, I quite like the idea of the octopus racing slide. So that's when you have eight slides side I'm by side. That. And they sometimes go around in a loop and then they go down racing together. And so what happens is if you had that on the hill, then it would it would encourage a healthy, active lifestyle because people would just run up the steps to the top of the slide and then race their friends down. So this would be perfect for families. It would be perfect for university students to have a really nice time racing each other on a slide. And you reckon I did read, that's great. No more wheelie bins down Baldwin Street. We can have a slide, and um, I saw, you see, that's a great idea, you know, just so we can have over the hills here. It's not like anybody's really walking there. We could have, no, we could, that doesn't cost that much. But the, the, the building a bike track all the way to um, the cycles, all the way down to Port Chalmers, and that doesn't cost much. But things turned very ugly very quickly. The rules are, take experimental drugs. Why are you wearing a mask, Garrett? Rules are rules. 
You're just not professional. Daddy Bob's dusting up. He's dusting up. It's Big Daddy Bob. Afternoon. Kakite. Yay. Big Daddy Council, Big Daddy, Big Tennis Ball Ball. I think it's very important as part of education for children to learn how to drive motorbikes and other oh, wow. vehicles. So right. um, it, it, it would make Flagstaff a lot more accessible for many different people of all different abilities and disabilities. So my grandfather, 88 years of age, he had three primary means of transportation. One was a quad bike, one was a tractor, and one was a car. So we know that children can often ride on motorbikes. We also know that it's the elderly can often ride on motorbikes, that it would be much easier to go up over Flagstaff and look at the spectacular views for a wider variety of people with all the different abilities and disabilities to be able to just ride up there on motorbikes. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. I reckon um, that's a good idea. What do you think about environmentalists? They're trying to get there. There is an, an agenda being pushed here to try and, like from some people, try and get rid of cars mainly in the main main city city centre. What do you think about that? Well, um, I think it's incredibly important for us all to look after the environment. So we all need to do our recycling. We need to care for the environment. We need to make it look as beautiful as possible. But where policies around the environment should be about making Lock the standard of living as high as possible for everyone, including all of our children in the next generation. So when it comes to the environment, what I'm doing is my family has a, a family trust, Patch of Forest, it's native bush, and we're looking after that. We're, we're making sure that there is future natural forest in New Zealand to look after. But as for getting rid of the cars, the cars were invented for a very good reason. They were invented because they were so practical and so easy to transport people and yep. things around. Someone's got to look after the cars and keep the cars up. Mm. So we shouldn't be getting rid of things that make life and quality of life higher and easier <coughs> so that we go back in time to the dark ages. We should just be caring for the environment and keeping it as beautiful as we can around us, yes. but continue using our cars. It's very impractical for a lot of people to be expected to walk long distances. If we were to remove the cars, all of a sudden our worlds would just shrink and get very small and we wouldn't be able to explore our own backyards in the same way. Um, you're right. And I um, I don't know. Um if they're pushing an anti-car agenda, the Greens and everything, but it sort of feels like they are, and adding carbon taxes to all of everything. What do you feel about carbon taxes? What? what you're about to see will shock you. It's washing up time. Leave that to me. What am I doing? You don't have to answer that. I'm fucking at the toilet! Yeah, behind the locked door, smugly grinning at me like a little... <laughs> So, um. Okay. So, um, I believe that there is a particular um, vision for the city which involves reducing everybody's access to car ownership. So, this particular vision is about increasing cycleways and promoting active movement. So, the active movement they're wanting is for everybody to be walking or cycling everywhere. But this isn't practical for a large amount of our society. We have 70% of the people who live in Dunedin who require their own car in order to transport themselves to their jobs as well as transporting themselves, their children to schools. So it's very important that these, these some of these 70% of the people require it because they, are, they work in the trades industry and they need to be able to transport machines and other resources around to be able to do their jobs to maintain our infrastructure and our housing. So removing the access for vehicles from our lifestyle would make a big backward step for our quality of life.
So when we look at people using public transport, a lot of them find public transport not very comfortable. So we have we have to improve the accessibility and comfort and usability of our public transport system. Just yesterday, I noticed while well, going through South Dunedin near Pack and Save, a young lady was lying on the footpath beside a bus stop sign. It looked very uncomfortable. So we know that there is not seats beside these bus stops and many of these bus stops don't have shelter. So when it's raining, it's windy and it's snowing, they are looking very cold and uncomfortable. Our bus hub itself is not very comfortable or user friendly. For our bus hub, I recommend that we create a cafe sort of um, bus hub so that the people will be able to sit inside in the comfort of a warm environment and that we Treat it a little bit more like a lounge in Southern Airport. And we have on the TV screens information which is accurate about when the bus will be arriving. So they only go outside to the front door when the bus has arrived and before that they can sit down and relax in the comfort of a warm, comfortable chair. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, she lied. She said, it's not legal for you to be posting videos, um, speaking at a public debate. I can post what you've said. Yeah, 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 yeah. She lied. It's your bag. It's my bag. Hey, hang it, hang it. So I'm okay to pet the dog? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Where do you oh, land on Jules Coin? Hey, 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 hey. What a name, Jules Oh, can I mention something else about public transport? I love talking about public transport. So, um, in the future of public transport, I think. Oh, we'll wait for that one's up. Yeah. Yeah. I missed entirely what you're going to say, so I'm just going to lead you back with the question. Yeah. I'm going to listen to what you're saying. Lead you back yeah. in a different direction. What were you saying about public okay. transport, man? Okay, so with public transport, I think the future could be having a train that runs from the airport to Port Chalmers and is able to stop at Mosgill and at the uh, Dunedin City well, Centre train yeah. station and also at Port Chalmers. So yeah, that that's a great can, idea, Pam. So um, those trains, yeah, trains, um, they take a lot of the uh, stress off the roads. And uh, there's been an agenda being pushed to keep everything on the road from the National Party. National Party is who took everything off rail. Mm. And now we are, like maybe you have said, really ruining the inf infrastructure by only training cargo from town to town. And, a, and a, honestly, a passenger train system has been proposed by lots of people and especially from, if you could get the line repaired from Invercargill all the way to Wellington and then right all the way, because they already have the um, Wellington to Hamilton and Hamilton to um, Auckland line. They run a tourist train from Wellington to Auckland and the South Island should follow suit, honestly. And we have the Tyree Gorge, we have the, that's a um, tourist train. We should have that running up to the Tyree Taking the streets off the road, it's going to take. We, how many how many train drivers do you need? One, two, three. How many bus drivers? And the buses are never on time. We're never. We the app is clunky and terrible. Aaron Hawkins is holding the DCC to hostage, and and the, the current council has managed to get to keep that in place. The buses never come, and there's what one bus out to Palmerston. And you know, five buses a day to Port Chalmers. If you could have their all trains, how many train conductors do you need, honestly? Because they stay on all day, just mm. taking cargo yes. around. Mm. It would save so much money. It would save the roads. I can't understand it. How, you so you're yeah. really into trains too? Um, I'm not 
maybe not as enthusiastic about trains yep. as you are. I'm pretty so, enthusiastic about trains. So I think from the Dunedin Airport to Port Chalmers makes quite a lot of sense having a yep. train system that way. Absolutely. I'm not sure about the financial implications of having a train line um, all the way to Invercargill or all the way up to Wellington. So yep. when it comes to the Tyree Gorge train, don't quote me on this, but there is a large amount being subsidised by the Dunedin ratepayers. I don't know the number, but... Yeah, it would be. It, it could be Absolutely. to the extent of somewhere between two hundred and eighty and four hundred yeah. uh, dollars per passenger. So it's quite pricey to maintain yeah. the train it's, lines. It's overall maintenance of the lines. It yes. costs the money. So we shouldn't be ripping up the ones that we already have. No. But we should be. Um, they just need to to establish. They just need to keep the current lines, and it's just a matter of using the cargo trains as passenger trains. You have lines from um, the. To create election graphics presentation, it's always a challenge. Digital magic. There will only be people like me, so. Hold on. You have lines down by the stadium all the way to Whitehead. And if you could run those as a passenger train, it would cost far less than buses because they already have the carriages for the Tory Gorge. And there's a train, a cargo train going, what, 10 times a day all the way to, all the way to Wellington. So, and all the way down to cargo. How do you think stuff gets around? It's not on the roads. Most of it's the trains, and it takes the train all the way to the ferry and takes the ferry to Wellington. Or it drives up on a really heavy truck and destroys the roads and gets on a truck or on, on the ferry to Wellington or on train carriages that go on the ferry. I think the best thing for the transport is we want a very solid infrastructure to be able to transport our goods Absolutely. around and if people around, we want it to be reliable, we want it to be affordable and efficient, and we want it to, because infrastructure is the foundation that our society and our businesses are built on. So we need to make sure there's not disruptions on our roads, such as big potholes, as well as not disruptions such as roadworks occurring on the roads for long periods of time. So the aim is to find the most cost-effective way to move goods and people around to where they need to go for work, for study, for play, and so that everybody gets to where they need to be with the least amount of stress and as the lowest cost as possible, as quickly and efficiently and safely as possible. Hey, 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 that's, yep, that's right. And um, a good passenger train service brings in people and tourists and generates income. It's a novelty to take a train. Mm. If you move from Dunedin to a city with a train service, you are amazed at how efficient and fast public transport is. And Wellington has an incredible train service. This is something that needs to be addressed. I'm serious. I, tell you, I'm, I'm a, I am a train enthusiast. When I got to Wellington, I was just amazed at the amount of trains you can take everywhere. And it's $10 to take the trains all day. And everybody takes trains, not buses. <laughs> I don't understand it. I can't understand it. But once again, there is some sort of agenda here to keep cars and not trains. And there is some sort of agenda as well to take cars out of the city. So we have all of the um, cable car lines still around, for example, and it would not be hard at all to drag at least uh, one to three electric buses out and have them looking like cable cars all the way up high, those lines go all the way up high street. Those are electric trains. And they, they're in Wellington, electric buses. You know the old cable cars they have going around Christchurch? Mm. We could have those in the city centre. We would, it would bring tourists in. They do. When you go to Christchurch, you go on the cable cars? I do, they're cool. I don't know. This council is crazy though, can Well, I, I think it's so important to have these discussions with people. Every single person yeah, has really have ideas. individual ideas of what they think will add the most value Absolutely. to the city. Yeah. So because of my passion and love for sort of adventure tourism and doing activities with my children, yeah. I imagine what would add more value would be um, able to rent some motorbikes for an affordable price and having a track over the Flagstaff so that we can as a family, ride motorbikes over Flagstaff for a day outing and having a nice shelter at the top of the hip, at, of the mountain so that we can look at the view and have lunch up there. And so to me, a, a motorbike trail up there may not be that expensive, 
Also being able to rent the motorbikes for an affordable price as a family means it would it would be another tourism sort of activity that would bring Absolutely. people in. Absolutely. And right. it would absolutely, absolutely be stunning, stunning, stunning scenery up at the top of Flagstaff that it would really attract people to the city. Yeah. Now, I also feel gondola like... Gondola would cost a lot of money. Though. Now, the gondola one, at the moment, Queenstown is upgrading the gondola system. So that means they are removing their machinery for the bottom and for the top and all the four, car- uh, four people carriages, which are wheelchair accessible. They are currently in the process of installing eight-person carriages and new machinery at the top and bottom. So this means that that second-hand equipment needs to go somewhere. So there may be, if we're looking for gondolas, there may be a cost-effective way to access the gondola machinery that could be available and easy to source. Yeah, maybe. Bloody expensive, though. Um... You like motorbikes, it sounds like. You like motorbikes. Yeah. Now, um, fuel prices are a little bit uncomfortable at times. Yes. Yeah, sure. However, the price, hey, the hey, price hey. of charging vehicles using electricity will also be uncomfortable for people. So it seems to be that transport and infrastructure some things in life are a wee bit expensive and I feel like the most important thing is to create prosperity so if we can create a more prosperous city then we'll have more of abundance around us so it will actually bring the price of things down energy crisis, if we all go electric with vehicles, will become greater. So there's not enough lithium in the world for the world to go electric. There's only enough lithium for about 1% of the world's population to access it for batteries. Now, to make a lithium battery for a car requires between 100 and 300 barrels of oil to generate a battery that contains the equivalent energy of 100 barrels of oil. So the lithium mining to get the batteries made is a very environmentally unfriendly and high energy consuming activity. So we can't actually call electric cars as a um, green transportation because we shouldn't call it um, um, technology which doesn't use oil because that's incorrect. Uh, We should actually refer to it as a remote combustion um, engines or um, using energy where the energy has been used in in another country to produce the product. Kids today are really responsible and safety conscious. No! Uh, <laughs> Yay! Um, look, I'm not sure if you can d- deliver pamphlets, can you? Can you? I'm not sure if you... Is that... and, oh, let me just get the yeah, law book. <laughs> um, no, no, not legal, not legal. Kaki day! <laughs> Gosh, hey, come on. Right. You there? Okay. Thanks for coming in, Pamela. Uh, this is Pamela Taylor, who's running your uh, running the councillor and mayor for the Newton City Council elections on what is it? Starts eighth of October. So if you like what Pamela said, get in and vote, guys. Everybody needs to vote. It's our city. So vote. Local body elections are important, and younger people need to vote. Thank you. He knows, B. He knows. He's in my pocket. Cocky <laughs> day. It's not fucking 19 decade three. Like, cool people read the ODT and fucking heaps of people like funny videos. Welcome to the fucking future. You're a an idiot. You should be giving me 20 bucks and flyers and doing an interview. It's make or break. Like, you either come and talk to me, or I f*** it on you from a very great height. Jesus. So, um, do I have to explain this? I'm 
fucking Richard Pullman. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Yay! Why is she trying to take dirt on me? All of that information arrives here where our exclusive computer network, designed and built by real-time technology, processes the information ready for the latest and most sophisticated graphics system. Two million dollar graphics supercomputer. My job! I'm fucking Richard Pullman! Hey! I'm a professional, uncredible um, journalist, and how much do you want? Did you deliver the flyers or me? So how much? He'll pay you to deliver the flyers anyway, he said he would. She's paid me to do propaganda flyers at the same time. Ha! Genius idea from Pullman again. Yeah, so all you're going to do is deliver the propaganda and we'll make more coin. And I'm using it for the show, bro, so yeah. If you want some money, I'll give you some, but I got you a fucking hard drive and I'm getting us a tripod. I'm using it so we make more money. He gave us mean content and she gave me that big bottle of fizz. Like, he definitely paid. He's just smart with his money and not as rich as those two. Back to the status, they're blocking my reach, bro. We need more eyes on this. This is huge news.